So, Chris, like when you decided to do real estate, like, like when you're like made that decision, what, are you trying to piss me off right now? What was going through your Cause, mind? Because um, you're not even fogging a mirror, bro. Yeah, but it's really interesting stuff. Oh my gosh, I hate when you. It's <laughs> it like such a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> you are accused of being a high energy, passionate individual. I resemble those remarks. Yes, and dude. You, that we live in a world of zombies. Like I can't believe how many people can barely fog a mirror, can can barely open their throat chakra, throw even a whiff of confidence behind what they're saying, and yet they're hoping to be successful in life. I'm like, man, no one's gonna bet on you. You aren't betting on you. Like, like who's got? No one's got your back. If they do, they're just hoping that one day you'll figure out how to be you and comfortable in your own skin. Because man, that's a turn off energy. I ain't doing no deals with you. I am partnering on crap with you. I'm not gonna be enjoying going to dinner with you. Like that does not, that really does nothing but really just piss me off. What's up, Chris Crone here. I am pausing my own podcast to make sure that you have my cell phone number. Because as you're listening and thinking to yourself, man, I wish I could text Chris and ask him a real estate question or a business question, a marriage question, a health question. I got news for you. The phone number is right here, it's 385. 217-3477, save this in your phone and literally start texting me right now. Just drop your name and say, hey Chris, it's whoever you are and ask me a simple question. Let's go. So do you think that ruined the beginning of our podcast, Chris? <laughs> My People turned it off. They're like, I'm not watching this they crap. They probably, the first they 10 probably seconds, did. The first impression, we probably lost the people who needed it the most. <laughs> so I want to talk to you a little bit about passion. Yeah. Uh, I was watching this video and they've got clips from, you know, Steve Jobs and uh, Dave Ramsey and some other people saying like, you got to be passionate about what you're doing because you lose motivation otherwise. Yeah. It, it actually begs the question, where does motivation come from? Yes. Because this is the one thing, I, I think at my events, I get asked more than any other question, where does your energy come from and how come you're so motivated? Because me, I get up at 4 a.m. Like flawlessly, res relentlessly, Monday through Friday, and you can't take it from me, I love it so much. And like, well, where do you get, where do you get the energy to do that and then go to the gym and then do your meditation without falling asleep and then where, you know, you're spending time with your wife and then your kids and then you're working or you're playing or you're getting on your jet, you're going somewhere. And I've seen you at 2 p.m. and you still got high energy. I've seen you at 6 p.m. at dinner, you're still high energy. I've seen you at 9 p.m. and I swear you still got high energy. And there is a secret of where this stuff comes from. But um, it, yeah, I mean, it absolutely is a separator because there's a lot of people that look at me and I'm not going to lie, like, a bunch of my comments are like, that dude, that dude's on Adderall. He driving me crazy. I, can't, I just can't watch him. Your neighbor, your neighbor accused you of that when they're like, I'm yeah. checking at your boss that you work for. Uh, and, he said and, he can, couldn't watch a whole video. He's like, I gotta take him in doses. I know, and, and I, I'm a lot for people. <laughs> and I, I don't care. And yet, Chris, on the flip side, I've heard you counsel people when they're starting a business yeah. to beware of passion plays. Yeah, I, so we're talking really about two different things. like. Passion, break, it, break it down for me. Passion can be a good thing and passion can be an awful thing. Yes. So um, there's a lot of people that want to make money with their passion. And the problem with that is I had this buddy of mine a long time ago that um, literally when I was 12 years old, he was the one that drugged me to choir and made me a choir boy because I didn't like choir. I thought it was goofy and stupid. And he kind of influenced me to love the game of singing. And when he was an adult, he came and worked for my company. And he told me his dream was to go on American Idol. And then he sang for me. And I, and I thought to myself, Rodney, you have a really great choir's voice, but I don't think you'd have what they would call like the X it factor online as like a soloist, as a singer in a certain genre. Like, dude, it just, it wasn't there. And it, there's like this, think how big that industry is when, when that show had all of its momentum that we loved watching the culling of the people who could sing from the people that sang so awful, it was like your ears were bleeding. And we love watching a train wreck. Oh my gosh, there's something that we get out of it that is so entertaining to laugh at other people that think they can do something that they can't. That's kind of awful really when I think about it. But that was my buddy. He, he, had, he, he had a lovely voice. He definitely didn't have the the voice. And I remember just sitting there and I challenged him, like I challenged everyone in my company. I'm like, make $1,000 this month doing something you love. And he told me it was gonna be singing and at the end of the month he hadn't made any money. And I just said, hey Rodney, I don't know if anyone loves you enough to tell you this brother, but um, you sing 
great for choir and you can't sing otherwise. Like you, you just, you don't have that voice. It's not melodic. It's not nice to listen to. It's not a standout. Like, and at your age, if you don't have it now, you may never have it. Like, I don't know, like sell everything you have and go get voice lessons. I don't think it's going to work. And so passion often drives us in business the wrong way. How, how a lot of people get in business is they say, I make crap. Mm-hmm. I, I'm an artist and I learned how to get graffiti on this dog and I did it all by myself. So I'm passionate about it because I made it and I really like it. And where passion hurts business is that instead of being passionate about serving people, they get passionate about what they're doing in their business. Do you see the distinction and the difference mm. between having passion for serving your customer versus what you're serving them? There's a world of a difference. And a lot of companies that fail, it's because they're not in love with their clients. They're in love with themselves. They're in love with how great they think their product is, how great they think their service is. And that's where, that's where products and services that we create, we're so proud of that our pride blinds us to what we're actually supposed to focus on. So um, not only that, but the problem with being a brand new entrepreneur and making something and doing the fulfillment, because in every business, you have marketing, sales, and fulfillment. Someone's got to market to find leads. Someone's got to sell people crap. Then someone's got to give them all the stuff that they promised they would. A lot of young entrepreneurs where they put their passion is not into marketing. They don't put it into selling. You know where they put it? The product. They put it in the product. And so first of all, their business has struggled because they don't have enough marketing and they don't have enough sales. And then when you ask them, hey, well, anyway, tell me how many hours you're working a week. It's always like 60, 80, 90, 100. And that's because fulfillment takes time. And your business will never go anywhere if you are the bottleneck that is doing the fulfillment. I want everyone to hear this one. Your business ain't going nowhere if you're the one that is doing the fulfillment. So instead what you do is, I'm not saying don't be passionate. I'm saying... Be careful of where your passion lies. Put all your passion into your customer's experience. Put all your passion into how they're perceiving it, what they're gaining from it, and what the value proposition is. Take pride when they love it. Take pride when they hate it, and they teach you how to make your product better and thank them for it. You do that, and you can build a world-class company. Be careful not to become your own bottleneck, however, in some part of the business, because usually an entrepreneur can only bring their business so far. I see actually most entrepreneurs, if you want to know gross revenue wise, where they all like cease to go past, they can't bring in more than somewhere between one and a half and five million dollars of, of gross. Once they have one and a half to five million dollars of revenue, year after year after year, try as they might, they don't actually get more. And that's because they don't learn the next most valuable lesson, which is who, not what. And What they need to learn is they started the party. They're a creator. Creators often start businesses, but then they confuse themselves for the sake of pride and ego that they're the president. They're the founder. They're the CEO. And they love these titles. And that's not what they are. They are awful managers of human beings. They're excellent creators of goods. Very few people can straddle the world between being a great creator and a great implementer. I'm a classic example. I I started the party. I know how to bring in that first several million of revenue, but it wasn't until year after year painfully that I realized I'm an awful manager until I put you in play, everything changed. We quadrupled our business that year and all I did was work less and get out of your way and made more money. So passion for the right thing, passion for the customer, passion for the team. So somewhere, Chris, there's somebody listening to this that absolutely hates their business. Yeah. They're they're all over the place and you know who you are. You started a business because you loved making tchotchkes and now you're stuck having to figure out marketing and sales and managing people and you hate it. Or they're doing, or they're providing the service and they're the one interfacing with the client. Like, my, like my, I'm my, a realtor. I own my own business. I do some marketing. I do some selling. I convince you that I'm the guy. Guess who's writing up the paperwork? Guess who's getting in the car and driving to the house? Yep. Guess who's doing showings? So it's lone wolf. Lone wolfers are in yeah, this category too. Yeah, and it's just like, great. Tell me how many houses you can do a year. Well, I, I could probably do like 50. Cool. Can you do 500? Never, never, not, not with that model. So what, what's your advice to someone in that position that has, has created, they, they are not really an entrepreneur. They yeah. own a job yeah. and they now hate that job. Um, my, my core belief is that whatever you're doing four to 12 months from now, you shouldn't be. So if you're a creator, you should constantly be shifting your role in, in your position. What should you do when you're done launching something that you've created? You should focus on creating another thing. Hmm. right? And then hiring the team that is going to manage it, optimize it, scale it, and expand it. 
But this whole conversation started with motivation and where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, passion. That's where I want to go next is, yeah. okay, now you've got the next person who's, who's super passionate about something and they want to get that out there and, and do it. And then they get tired. Yeah. How do you not get tired? I never get tired. But how? Yeah. So um, there's a couple of secrets to that. The first one has to do with what is energy and how do you cultivate it? So let me describe the people to you that run out of energy. Well, my alarm went off at 745 and then I hit snooze three times. And at 804, I finally got out the door. I barely had enough time to shower, eat half of my breakfast, give that person in my life a kiss on the cheek and I was out the door and I arrived just on time to work. This person, mm -hmm. this person is going to be very tired. They don't have energy to sustain them later in the day because all they've just demonstrated is that they are living to work. And if 85% of people hate their work, they're screwed. So my day starts at 4 a.m. for a reason. I'm not gonna shit on people that they should, but listen to the principle. I'm cultivating energy six ways every morning. The first thing I do is I tackle 40 minutes of an audiobook on something I'm deeply passionate about or I'm learning mastery on, something that I need to learn about. Then I'm on the treadmill, getting in my cardio, building my heart, and at the exact same time, I'm doing my meditation. This lasts for 30 to 45 minutes. My cardio builds my heart, my meditation builds my soul. And so this is where I'm connecting to God, um, gratitude. This is where I enter my mind palace and I'm practicing my outcomes for the day. Uh, this is where I'm reinforcing positivity over and over again. So I'm ready for whatever the day might bring. Then I'm going to get into my lift. I'm lifting with my wife, a couple of my friends, and we are lifting hard. We're now practicing mental fortitude to get personal bests and the best workout that we've ever had. Then I'm going to go spend time with my wife because she's my number one core relationship outside of me and God. And I need to know that we're good. And I ain't going to do that at the end of the day. You put things off at the end of the day, you may never get to them. I am not gonna procrastinate the person that I claim to be the most important in my life. And then after that is my kids. I'm not gonna be that dad that says he was never there. My kids and I, we were playing Monopoly last night. I ended the day with them and I started the day with them. My, my morning power hour ends at eight to nine a.m when they're all privately educated so they don't get lost in a school system that says, well, you're off to school at seven and you're off to school at 7.45 and you're off to school at 8.30. I'm like, I'm not playing that game. Uh, you're mine between eight and nine. And during that hour, we are connecting and we're talking life lessons. Today's life lesson was about Jesus healing 10 lepers and how one of them came back because I got a son that desperately needs to learn the lesson of gratitude who's been receiving a lot, has not been communicating a lot of gratitude. So what we're doing is we're talking about practical life skills about how to be a decent human being and what you need to learn to be a successful human being in life. That's my entire morning routine. And what I'm doing is cultivating energy. The book cultivates my mind. My meditation cultivates my spirit. My cardio cultivates my heart. My lifting cultivates my muscles. The time with my wife cultivates that core relationships outside of me and God. And the time with my children cultivates my family. Now I am a cultivated human being, 9 a.m. Everyone else is struggling to get their day started. And I can say everything that was important today already is done. So now when I wake up 20 years from now and say, where will my destiny be? Let me tell you where it's not gonna be. I'm not gonna be overworked disconnected from my family and fat. What I'm going to be is fit, highly connected to my wife and my children. And I am going to be mentally sharp and I'm going to be rich because also money is a big part of what I build into my routine for ensuring that my money goes to work for me instead of me working for it. And, uh, coffees, Coffee? Not somewhere in the mix of how you cultivate it. That's what like I know. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Do. I don't do false stimulants. I, I I will have a pre workout, um, but I will not. I, I don't do coffee during the day. I don't do caffeine. I don't do uh, I, what do they call those drinks? Energy drinks. I don't do energy drinks. Yeah, none of that stuff. Quite the opposite. I've got an anti aging routine, and so I am popping like handfuls of pills with my RN and my MN and and you know my resveratrol and everything else. And this gives you limitless energy. Well, first of all, maybe second of all, we need to understand this. We will lie to ourselves and say energy comes from a good night's sleep or it comes from eating a certain amount of food. Or a certain type of food. There, there, there is some truth to that, but they pale in comparison to the ultimate truth. Energy is a choice. 
I have energy for every inspiring choice that I make. If I make a choice, I'm gonna back it up accountably with energy. When we bring lethargy to a choice that we supposedly chose into, I'm gonna tell you the truth, you didn't choose in. What you're doing is you are doing something begrudgingly. What part of your life force deserves to be preserved instead of spent when something is inspired? Why are we preserving energy? You don't like what you're doing? Change it up, fix it. There's a lot of people like, Chris, I can never enjoy that routine. Lifting weights, it's hard to do it that long. And I don't know if, I've, I've, I've always had boring meditations. My mind gets distracted. I'm like, cool, you're just not doing it right. You haven't found your jam. You haven't found the way to do it. These things literally rev me up through the most exciting things. If I'm not gonna be jacked excited, then it's not worth my time and it wasn't inspired. If it's not inspired, life is too short to live an uninspired life. Okay, but come on. There's never a Saturday or a Sunday where you wake up and you're like, you're like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed right now. Oh, no, no. I want to be really, really clear. I can go high energy on work, on working out, on travel. When it's time to rest, I rest hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I am so committed. I am all in. Like Sunday, good luck catching me. Like uh, I sleep four to six hours most nights. And then on the weekend, I play mega catch up. Like I'll sleep six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, and then for and that works for me, by the way. And 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 it's not a what does the scientist say? It's not a doctor thing. It's what I say, because I'm a choice. And when I 100% believe in my choices, they have the efficacy to be what they're supposed to be. I get that if someone else slept four hours a day, they'd freaking be a nightmare. But that's more about their belief system than their choice of how they choose to sleep. There's victimhood in that person. A person can't truly be a choice unless they fully understand their choice. And most of us, we are defaulting to containers and systems and structures in the form of spouses, governments, bosses, churches, and everything is shooting on you, telling you what you're supposed to do in your life. And so what we're saying is, well, I'm a good member of society, so I'll, I'll follow their shoulds. And I think I'm making a good responsible choice, but I got news for you. Your heart is in, isn't even half in it. Because all you're doing is defaulting to a choice someone else made for you. Where is your choice? There is power and there is energy in a choice that you own and make yourself. Okay, let's talk about a different kind of exhaustion. Not physical, not like, not like I'm sleepy or tired in that way. What about burnout? What about, do you ever have those moments where you're like, I don't really want to do this anymore? Let me tell you what burnout is. Burnout is for people that don't value time. Because what they do is they make they choices where they overcommit their time. These are the people that tell you that they're too busy. And then in the attempt to do everything that they committed to, which they cannot, they fall short and they burn out. And burnout is a victimhood story. It's not true. It's not real. They overcommitted themselves. They didn't know how to value their time. So they said yes to everything. There's a business owner out there right now. This is so common amongst businesses of 20 or fewer employers. There's a business owner out there that is wearing proudly the hat of a president or CEO. And here's what they're doing. They're doing $5,000 an hour work when they're winning some really big contract for the company. Meaning that's how much money they make per hour when they bring in. It's like, well, we brought in a $40,000 deal. And it took me eight hours to do. So that's $5,000 an hour. But that same business owner is also doing $800 an hour work when they're participating in some of the fulfillment on what they could pay someone else to do. They're also doing $200 an hour work, work that a CEO should be doing. They're also getting the coffee and making photocopies and reading their own emails and doing $15 an hour work. This person will work 80 to 100 hours a week because they think the more they work, the more they'll make. What they don't understand is that sometimes their time is worth $5,000 an hour and sometimes it's worth $15 an hour. And unfortunately, the way they use 10 to 20% of the time is actually making 80 to 90% of their income, which means they're just filling their world due to lack of standards with a whole bunch of garbage. So why are they exhausted and why are they burning out? Because they don't have standards. Show me anyone that's exhausted, and I'll tell you it's because they don't have standards. And they also struggle with the core belief that there's even the possibility of balance in life because there's quote unquote too much to do when all they've done is gotten used to saying yeses when they should have been saying noes. Now, the way that I double my money every single year and actually reduce stress and headache and time commitment is that I double my standards. If this year some of my time is worth $100,000 an hour, then next year I can only say yes to things that are worth $200,000 an hour. And the person this year that I'm training that is watching me fulfill $100,000 an hour work, this is their job next year. 
So I'm also always training up my protege. So I know the value of my time all the time in every choice. And by doing so, I know how to say no. By knowing how to say no, I create balance in my life. Most human beings need to learn to say yes to create the chaos of abundance because they're not making enough. They don't have enough chaos of abundance. They don't have enough opportunity because they have the habit of no. So then you turn to yes. Go to a Tony Robbins seminar. He'll convince you. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. You're going to say yes to everything. You'll experience abundance. Be like, I'm making money here. I'm making money here. I'm making money here. I've never been so stressed. This person successfully learned to go from a no world to a yes world, and now they will not be able to control the chaos until they learn for real, the right time, the right way, how to say no. Once they learn to say no again, they can say yes to the right things. They can say no to the right things. And now they have balance in their life. So exhaustion and a lack of motivation comes from people that are dumbasses with their choices. They're just given the wrong yeses and the wrong noes.